Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna change this exterior door handle on a 2012 Freightliner Columbia. Uh, the guts are kind of bad here, it's just broken. I'd had it apart and lubricated it and cleaned it a couple times, but it's just shot now and having a hard time getting in the truck from this side. So we're gonna go ahead and change that before I just get shut out completely one day. And it's kind of a, thought it was gonna be way harder than this. Thought I was gonna have to take the whole door panel apart on the inside. But I found a way to do it, so we don't have to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, <clears throat> just on a side note here, I did add an email address to the channel. It's diysemi at yahoo.com. So go ahead and email me any questions or, or comments you might have, and I look forward to hearing from you. I've had some really good comments and, and suggestions and, and requests here lately, and I'm going to try to address a couple of them in, uh, in some videos here. So I'm really glad to hear from you. And... Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and you'll uh, not miss a video then. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so I'm gonna show you out here because where it's in the door there is, is a really tight spot. So here's how our, our, our handle sits in the door. We're gonna change this tumbler too. Well, swap it from the old one to the new one, I mean. This is what the back side of this looks like. Basically got three clips here that we have to, you got some bars coming down. You got a bar from the interior door handle down to here. And then you got one going up to the lock. And then uh, from the handle to the mechanism there. So here you got uh, one here, one here. And then we got one right down here. So what we need to do is we're gonna take a long skinny flathead screwdriver and just pop these off those, those rods in there. And then what holds it in the door is this long screw right here. So let me uh, take you over here and show you how to get this thing open. So this is the interior part of our door here. Uh, first thing you need to do is empty out this pocket because if you leave stuff in there it can fall inside the door and if it gets trapped and you can't get it out it's just going to rattle around in there and irritate you so long skinny flathead screwdriver we're just gonna there's some clips in here you just kind of work along the edge here pop them out one at a time just be real gentle these don't come off hard there we got one more over here. Okay, after you get them top clips out, the baby just pulls out of there like that. So, your truck will either have a piece of cardboard in here or cheap ass plastic like mine does. I've already been in here, so all I did was cut a slit. Don't get crazy with it because you want to seal it back up again. That's a good moisture barrier and uh, helps keep the cold out just a little bit, not much. So here's those rods right here. I was telling you about two of them. One of them's over in the corner there. So as you can see, pretty tight in here. Can't have my hands and end the camera in there at the same time, but just wanted to show you. Then over here on the edge, this was loose and I had glued it in, but I had to unglue it again. See that hole right there? That nut is in there. So you need a uh, Get yourself a long 3 8 inch extension and a socket. I'm not sure what size socket we need yet, but uh, we can fit that in a hole here to get that nut off. So let me get everything set up here. I gotta warm my hands up. It's freezing cold out here today. It takes a 10 millimeter socket. I used a deep well with an extension here. In here, I spun that nut all the way off, okay? And you can pull out this black retainer That'll give you a little wiggle room trying to get these clips off in here. So the one going up to the door lock here, I did that one off first. I kind of pried it off. And then makes it easier because now I can wiggle this around here and get at these other clips. And then, so if you come around here. But, but this one here, this is the one that goes up to your interior door latch. It helps if you, if you pull this one up, then you can get at the clip better. So the only one I got left here is the uh, one going from the handle 
straight up to here. So that one's gonna be a little trickier. But uh, now that I can wiggle this exterior piece here, I can get at it a lot easier. So take that black retainer off first. Okay, we got this thing freed up in here. It's ready to come out. But first what we gotta do is, uh, here's the tumbler lock. There's a little, a little retaining ring around there. I gotta pry off to take the tumbler out. And then this piece can fold up here to make it through the hole. Otherwise, it's it's not going to make it through the hole. I'd really rather do this outside the, the door here, but it's not going to fit. So I got to find something to snap that little retaining ring out, and uh, I'll let you know how I did it. All right, so here we are. I brought this stuff inside because my fingers are just getting doggone numb. Um, <clears throat> right here is where that little retaining ring was. So when I popped that off, we could take this off the tumbler here and uh, scoot it up out of the way. Then we could make it out through the door hole. So what we need to do now is uh, the rest of the way get this tumbler off of here. Okay, take that little retainer off of there. There we go. Just uh, be mindful of the way you take it out. That's the way it's gonna go back in the new one. And uh, a lot of gunk and crud in here. It's probably from uh, the years of me squirting penetrating oil in there. It uh, collected in there. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and kind of clean this up a little bit. Maybe put some uh, some kind of grease or something in there. So this is on the old one here. Obviously, this was over there. So, this is attached to your tumbler. There. And uh, the rod from your interior handle comes down here and connects. And then, when you pull it, it, uh, it, it you know, you open your door from the inside. If it's locked, it releases the lock. So, that's how it does it. It connects right to the lock there and turns it. And then, uh, this one was the uh, the cable coming down from the from the button door lock connects right here so you push it up or down there and then this one here goes up inside of the door to the to the mechanism to uh you know when you pull the handle here it should actuate this this cable and release your latch yeah i took this and cleaned it up a little bit lubricated a little bit in there and uh ready to put it back in here you'll notice these grooves right here Okay, that's where the uh, that retainer slides into. And uh, so, it's gotta go through the hole like that. See? And then, uh, trying not to beat the piss out of that. There. Got the tumbler back in. Now what'll happen is this will just sit on top of there. Like so. And then uh, that U-shaped clip will go right around here on the bottom there. And then uh, see lock and unlock right there. And then when we put it back in we just got a clip here, a clip here, and a clip right here. Not gonna lie to you, these aren't easy to deal with inside that tight door. So, might take a little while, especially with frozen fingers, but we're going to uh, get them in there. We'll put this nut back on the end here, try it out. Okay, I wanna show you something on the old one, because the new one's already partway installed. This black ring around here, how it works is it, uh, you know, this is obviously on the outside, this chrome piece. 
this slides on the inside of the door okay and then it sandwiches the door in between here so when you're putting it on you got this black lip right here uh, you're gonna have to draw it in tight with your ratchet just so it touches there uh, any tighter you're gonna start to distort it so get it snugged up there and uh, that's good enough it'll be plenty tight by then otherwise if you leave it loose it's gonna flop around inside the door so I got that part done I just got to hook these up here so here's where I'm at got the new one in put this black trim piece on here to hold it in place and I screwed the nut in to keep it still so I can work on it here next we put this retaining clip in on the tumbler here uh, found a easier trick to doing that because it's hard to get a pair of uh, uh, pliers in there for retaining clips so I just uh, turned the key here to get it to uh, line up better because there's a groove in that shaft and then you can slide that retaining clip in from the side instead of up from the bottom to get in the groove better learned that the hard way took me a little bit to figure that out and then this shaft here for the door lock I got that secured on the bottom but I dropped it and it fell down in the door so I had to fish it back up to the top let me show you here this little trim piece can come right off it just popped off so you can see how to get that lined up in the hole again and fished up in there so that was that, that helped and then uh I got the interior door handle cable here hooked up so the thing I got to do is hook up that that cable over there that's gonna be very tricky because it's down in there tight but these other this other one for the interior handle it helps if you reach around the back here and pull the handle because working that mechanism will get the hole up higher then you can slide it in there better and then uh, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver once again to, to push the clips on so and get this finished up here so i got this thing done <clears throat> got it in there uh let's just test it out here quick works good so tape this plastic all up on the inside here it's not sticking well it's only three degrees outside so uh warms up a little i'm gonna maybe go and tape this again use some t-rex tape for that that stuff is pretty strong so uh i want to put this panel back in here pretty easy you just uh sits down see these tabs on the bottom here they're gonna sit down in the groove then you just tap them there that's all back together uh, for gluing this back together, I like to use uh, this flex glue. I've tried some other things. Tried uh, uh, Loctite glue and some various other things and haven't had great success. And I tried this and it worked pretty good. I don't know how well it's going to adhere in this cold. This is not uh, ideal for this, but uh, what else am I going to do? Wait till spring? So. I'm just going to glue that. Back on here. And then uh going to hold this here for a little bit. Now, there's a couple tips I want to give you that I encountered along the way. So, I'm just going to hold this here for a minute and we're going to Go in the garage and and I want to demonstrate, show you some things. A couple things I wanted to show you before we wrap this video up is uh okay, so it sits in the door like this. This is the piece that is by this screw where you gotta go through the hole in the side of the door to get at it with for the screw. Uh this piece right here is a bear to get at from through that pocket. So if you have a really long screwdriver. You can poke that off through this hole over here and also uh, help to 
seat that rod in this hole on the new one and then you'll have to push this from inside the pocket obviously that was kind of a bear to get at but uh takes some patience obviously and then this black piece here is the piece that sandwiches here's the outside of the handle here and then your door is here and then this so it kind of sandwiches you know the door in there to uh make it draw tight stay in place so on the bottom when this is in place in the door here's the top and the bottom it's going to be really hard to get this black piece behind this groove i had this whole thing installed and then come to find out i missed i was on the wrong side of that groove like that and you can't see because it's on the bottom so something really handy is this little mirror it's an extendable mirror then you can uh, as you're sliding this on you can be watching from the bottom to make sure it goes in that groove save yourself a lot of time to have to take it apart and redo it again uh, so basically just to show you what's going on with this one why i think it's probably not working anymore uh, this here is the mechanism that triggers that the whole works here and I played with it a little bit something inside here is is not working and catching right because it, it only works about every three four times you pull the handle it's not a catch obviously I bent this here that wasn't like that but uh, uh something's going on inside here to where that's not triggering that mechanism so they go bad it's no big deal and uh this was uh if you get to part number you can find these online for about forty dollars i priced one out at freightliner it was uh 130 dollars so the part numbers are easy to find all the way up to 2011 but after 2011 when they started making these glider kits the part numbers changed slightly and i can't tell I don't know if this is the same unit all the way through. This is essentially the same unit, you know, 2000 through 2011 for the most part. But after that, it's hard to, to match up part numbers for these glider kits. So anyway, the, uh, if you have some patience, you can definitely tackle this. And it's one of those things that's a little job and you hate to pay somebody else to do it because, you know, probably... It, it, minimum of an hour and a half in labor probably two hours in labor you're going to be billed so uh you know don't be afraid to uh give it a try hopefully that helps somebody somewhere and uh stay tuned hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos like this and there's uh, plenty more to come thank you